Hello, everybody. Welcome to Loop and Learn's Open Mic Night. And it's just a real exciting one for us because we live in the DIY community and uh, we live on the changes and the improvements in DIY and we're grateful for every step we take. So this is all about things to come in Loop and free APS. And if you're tuning in, you're smart. There's a lot of stuff going on. And um, Thank you for being here. I'm going to turn this over to Marianne Barker. And in case you haven't met Marianne, um, her just about Marianne, happily re retired after 35 years in the aerospace industry, diagnosed in 1972 with type 1 diabetes at the age of 23 while in graduate school, which can stress you and bring out diabetes, by the way. Um, she used multiple daily injections for 36 years until putting on a Dexcom in early 2015. Uh, her first pump was an Omnipod later in 2015, and except for three months on a borrowed Medtronic to learn how to loop, uh, she has been using pods ever since. Um, and she didn't tell me to say this, but I will say this. It's been an absolute <laughs> honor to work with Marion. She joined us like a day after she retired. She never got retirement really. Um, she is an extraordinary administrator with Loop and Learn, as well as a primary contributor to updating Loop Docs and loopandlearn.org. Uh, she is a truly special and kind human being. And um, I am turning this over to her and you are all in very good hands. Okay. Thank you, Joanne. Um, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen now, I hope. And um, I, I don't know whether it was a typo or whether Joanne can't read, but I was diagnosed in 1979, not 1972. Okay. So it was- <laughs> I can't read, that's okay. Oh, no, you can't read, okay. I, so I, I hate to make typos, but it does happen. All right, so um, the topic tonight uh, is things to come in loop and free APS. I was originally asked to talk about Dash, but there's so much more than Dash that's coming in loop dev. Although the next thing to come in free APS is primarily just the Dash upgrade. Um, so we'll go to the next chart. And uh, so I'm gonna go over a brief history of Dash. And this is pretty dense actually. So if, if I talk too long, uh, someone wave at me and say, move it along. You just do this motion and I'll, I'll stop talking because I tend to geek out about things. Um, and uh, we're gonna have a, a, a brief uh, commentate Commentation from Randall Knutson. Is it Knutson or Knutson? How do you pronounce your last name? Sorry. Knutson. Knutson. Okay. Who uh, is the, the guy who, who brought us the dash in, in loop, um, or at least in uh, Swift. And then we're going to talk about what's already in loop dev, because it is more than just dash. And then talk about why you might want to wait or not on loop dev. And then a little bit about free APS. And then a big question we've been getting is, should you switch your prescription? And of course, that's a, something only you can decide, but we'll try to give you the facts to make a, a reasonable decision. So this is my dense slide. The, we could spend two hours on each one of the boxes in this chart. So I'm gonna start in the middle with open APS. This was back in 2014, the first people who closed the loop um, with a, a single board computer, uh, they were plugged into a, a Dexcom G4 receiver and talking uh, to Medtronic pumps. Um, and then shortly thereafter, Nate and Pete got together and um, came up with a, a, an alternative solution where the iPhone was the controller and the single board computer was now the Riley link talking to the pumps. And that started out with Medtronic. Then in 2016, the Night Scout Foundation put out a, a bounty, shall we say, asking people, would you be willing to donate to help people be white hack hackers to break into the Omnipod? And they, I think they got more money than they actually had to shell out in order to make this happen. And there were expenses. It wasn't, I, people were doing this volunteer. Um, but we did eventually get the Eros pods, uh, figure out how to talk to them. And then um, that, that got put into loop. The, the deal about doing this was that this was a pump that donates little, or not donates, that, that pulses out insulin so that loop had to work with that rather than reading a reservoir like you do on um, Medtronic pumps. 
So there was both the, the top level control of loop plus the low level, how do you talk to and communicate to the pods. There's quite a bit of work in there. And uh, when this was first released to the public for the public to test, there were some bugs. And as those of you who've been around for a while probably remember some of those bugs at the beginning, but they did eventually get fixed. Um, the people at Android APS who use the same algorithm as Open APS, but in this case using an Android phone, also talking to a Riley link to talk to pumps, um, they picked up the work from the iOS people and put it into the AAPS systems. Um, so it's, it's something on the order of four years from starting to break um, Omnipod open to get it into loop, to get it into AAPS. So that was a significant amount of effort. And then it was the AAPS people who managed to start talking to the dashes first. And um, then that was picked up and translated, the communication and encryption layer was translated by Randall, who's gonna talk in just a second. And then one last thing is on the left here, uh, Free APS X, which is different from Free APS, um, was started about a year ago. And this is an implementation of the open APS algorithm on the phone, uh, on the iOS environment. So for anyone who doesn't know, Loop is one kind of algorithm with a very clean user interface. Open APS has a lot more if then else, a lot more uh, switches to toggle. Um, and I'm not gonna talk about which one's better because it's like talking about politics and religion. There's uh, advocates of both sides. I've used both systems. I use the free APS X and I've used loop and I had almost identical results in terms of time and range. But uh, I, I, I prefer loop personally, but that's not to say that uh, open APS isn't a, a wonderful thing as well. So anyway, we're gonna, um, I guess I did wanna say a few things about the, the open source community and the, the way it uh, works together is actually a, a wonderful thing. Um, there's a lot of documentation about how you actually talk to pumps and things get shared back and forth. So now I'm gonna go to the next chart which is kind of uh, eye candy. So this is uh, something from the Loop Docs dashboard uh, put together by Christian Agard, who uh, does the uh, translations for Loop Dev. And it just shows the different people the, and the different repositories needed to make Loop Dev work. And you'll notice at the, the top, these are some of the usual suspects that work on this project, but you'll also notice Randall doesn't show up there. So this is not necessarily the whole story. And uh, Randall Knudsen is the one who put together the Omni BLE repository that allows us to break through that encryption um, communication channel. And Randall, I'm gonna stop sharing so your face will show up on the big screen. I hope. There you go. Yep, that's that's perfectly fine. And I actually have a couple of slides I'm, I'm going to try and share. If I can get it to share. Uh, one second. Um, let me see. Hey, baby. Come here, hey, baby. Be Betsy, can you um, mute yourself, please? Sorry. So this is from a, a presentation I gave uh, at my company a little while ago. Um, and so my, I'll give you a little bit of background on what happened with Omni BLE. So about 14 months ago, my six-year-old, the one on the left there, got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Um, I knew nothing about type 1 diabetes. Um, being a father, though, I was, um, and just my personality is I'm going to dive in and learn everything I can possibly learn about it. So I'm a software developer by trade, but uh, don't know anything about iOS or Android development. Um, but I, I started reading and found Loop and was very excited about it. Um, the, I, she got the uh, Eros pods pretty quickly, about four months later. And I was saw that the dash was out and could eliminate the Riley link and was like, where, where's the work being done on this? And there was, I saw nothing. Well, Right as I was start, I, I, I was like, well, I can probably do this. So I, I bought a Bluetooth sniffer and started learning about Bluetooth because I knew nothing about Bluetooth. Um, 
And right then, my next daughter, I actually have four kids, one of them's not here, in May of last year was also diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. So um, that was a lot easier because I now knew a lot about it. But uh, yeah, here we go again. So um, I, I picked this picture. I love the picture, uh, partially because they're awesome. But also, to those of you who know what you're looking at, you can see all the signs of diabetes. Um, they both are wearing Dexcoms. They both have phones to connect to their Dexcom. So we, my wife and I both get readings. And this one who's already looping has the Riley link and you can see the bump of her um, Omnipod on her leg. So that's kind of why I love that picture is it's such a, um, um, a good explanation of what's going on there. So um, I, I, I just had decided I'm gonna, if no one else is doing the dash, I'm gonna do the dash. And I, I started trying to sniff it and that was, um, or, you know, trying to learn how to sniff Bluetooth, knowing what I know now, I never would have gotten there if I'd done that method, but I got on Zulip and posted, uh, in the general, hi, I'm Randall to the newcomers. I'm interested in porting dash and, uh, Joe Moran contacted me and was like, are you serious? I'm like, yes. And so he pointed me at the, and, um, the Android's AAPS repo and said, these guys have an implementation. All you have to do is translate that over into loop. And uh, you're, you should be able to do it. And I said, that's great. I don't know anything about Kotlin or Android and I know nothing about Swift or iOS, but what the heck, let's give it a shot. So one of the cool tools that they had developed was um, this pod simulator. Um, I know in, in the Eros development, they burned through a lot of pods and Joe was very instrumental in doing that process and figuring out how all the communication worked. Um, but the Android people had developed this pod that would run on a Raspberry Pi and act like an Omnipod air, uh, dash. So I started developing, trying to figure out how to connect to it, getting all the code together. I learned Swift, I learned Kotlin, and I learned how to translate from one to the other um, and just kept working and working and working. There was a tremendous amount of uh, encryption libraries and stuff like that. I had to translate line by line create test suites to make sure everything was encrypting and decrypting and exchanging keys and, and setting the messages up correctly um, and all of that. So uh, I started in July and by Christmas time, we were very, very close. And I had about two weeks off for Christmas. And during that time, um, I think it might've been Bill actually, Bill Gestrick, who had tried out uh, a different Bluetooth library. And from, from that, I figured out, oh, these are in the wrong sequence. It worked on the simulator, but it didn't work on a real pod. And once that worked, suddenly messages started going back and forth and we knew we had something. Um, so from that point, um, we were trying to clean it up and get it ready to put into um, loop proper. And that's when um, uh, Pete came back uh, and um, started helping us with the last few changes, started to run it. I know Marion started, I think Joe was the first one to actually run it on his body, but Marion was very closely thereafter. Um, and uh, within a couple of weeks of that, I had it on my little daughter too. And we were, we were up and running. And since then, um, there was a few weeks of bug fixes and tweaks, a couple of disconnect issues, but very shortly thereafter, things stabilized and, and um, we're still finding minor things here and there, but by and large, it's actually uh, the, I, I remember the day when I took the Riley link off my daughter and she hasn't worn it since. And she's like, can we put that, put that in my memory box? I said, yes, yes, we can. So that was a very special day. So that's, that's my story of how, how we got to where we are. Wow. Marion, you're muted. And it's hard to mute Marion too. Found it. Okay. Um, once I started sharing my screen, I had to go to a different place to unmute myself. So. Um, I was 
I'm now back on my charts. I'm going to settle down and be calm. So <laughs> as I started out saying, there's a lot in loop dev in addition to Dash. Now, I think Dash is the draw for a lot of people coming and testing loop dev. And it's a wonderful thing because there are a tremendous number of upgrades to dev. Um, there's only a partial list on this page, um, both of what's already been implemented and also the, the what's to come stuff. Um, but there's updated displays, there's improved onboarding, there's more guardrails. You can now import your profile, a single profile from Night Scout, but that's something you've never been able to do before. Um, there is remote bolus and uh, remote card possibilities. And uh, let's see, Bill, Bill, you want to wave? Bill Gestrick, um, he's the one who's the, the architect of this and we'll probably have him come back later when loop dev is a little bit more stable uh, to walk people through how, how to use this. Um, and he also brought over Night Scout from the, the implementation that Ivan put together and brought it over to loop and set it up so that it would work with dev. Um, so those, those two kind of major contributions are, are here from Bill. Um, I, I think the thing you're, we will probably do as many bug fixes as possible. Um, some of these other features may not be there for the first loop dev, but uh, there are things that are being just under active discussion, shall we say, because um, you got to design putting these in and you've got to actually do the coding. Um, so on the left hand side of these two figures is a master um, sh shot and you look on the right, you'll see what dev looks like. So it's a slightly different design. All the same features are there, but you'll notice that the blood glucose is now in a little box to the left with its arrow. There's no times noted here. It's a very simple, clean line. Um, if you need to know time, you touch on the blood glucose and it tells you the time. Uh, the, the loop doesn't say the last time it was looping. There's been a lot of discussion about that. This is the way it's designed. Uh, I think the tide pool people did a fair number of focus groups and we're looking at people coming into using loop who'd never used any kind of closed loop system before. So there's a balance between the new users and the geekers that, that needs to be, be met here. On the right hand side, the pump, uh, you'll notice there isn't the pod age. Once again, you have to tap on the pod to see the pod age. But when you're getting near to expiration, then you start to see a line here that, that notifies you. And that's uh, something that's probably gonna be updated. So if you say that you, you know, if you wanna change every two days, you, you can have it start to show up sooner uh, rather than uh, well after you've decided to change your pump. So I think, I think that's all I was gonna say on this chart. Um, and then I'm gonna go to the next chart and show a couple of movies. I'm trying to, there we go. Okay, so on the left, this is what we talk about with the onboarding. I don't know how many of you have seen on Facebook people posting loop isn't working and they have to show their settings and there will be a setting that's missing. This does not allow you to log into loop without all of your settings. So this is a, a phone that had no loop on it and I'm gonna start the movie and then I'll pause and keep going as we move forward. And if you guys want me to stop and spend more time at one screen or another, we can always go back. Let's just give you a flavor for what it looks like. So basically the, the, you get the welcome screen. There's a lot more verbiage here. So if you're a new person who has never looped, there's a lot more explanation as you go through. Uh, the first thing you have to do is uh, accept the Apple Health. And if you'll notice when you accept health here, there is no read carbohydrates. This was something where people would turn that on and then it would accidentally, well, they would not intend to have a different app write carbohydrates that would be read to loop. And sometimes there would be accidental dosing there. Loop now has its own carbohydrate store. So it doesn't need to read from, from health. It does write to health and it also writes to, to Night Scout. So that, that's the difference. And then you see here, you have your choice of using Night Scout with Loop or set up Loop without Night Scout. So the very first thing you would do after health would be to enter your Night Scout, co co um, what's the word, um, credentials, if you wanna download your current settings from Night Scout. 
Um, I set it up without night scale so you can see the different different screens going through. So the, the first thing is there's uh, pictures and explanation of the thing that you're looking at. So you may know the glucose safety limit is what we used to call the suspend threshold in Loop Master. And it gives you explanations and it shows what the guard rail ranges are. And th these limits, we already have documents out that tell you how to change these limits if these are not limits that you're happy with. But these are limits that are reasonable for someone coming into loop who's never looped before. Um, and the glucose safety limit is kind of, if, if you decided to go with a glucose safety limit that was up at 110, you would not be able to put your pre-meal threshold below 110. You would not be able to set a correction range below 110 because you have first set that glucose safety limit up to that level. If instead you'd set it at, at 80, then that would be the floor for all of your other settings. So there's a relationship between the glucose safety limit, the pre-meal setting, and your correction range. So it's important to understand that. Um, we'll move on. And then you, so it offers you, oops, I did that wrong. So it'll offer you a suggestion and you can either accept the suggestion or you can put in your own value. Now they're explaining about the correction range and I think I went a little too far. Yeah, so it shows the picture of the correction range and how things move with respect to each other. And then you can keep going, you continue. So the, the pattern is there's an explanation, maybe a graphic, and then a continue button, and then you set your values. Now correction range allows you to have more than one value during the day. The glucose safety level, you can only have one value. So you'll notice there's now a plus at the top. So that allows you to put in more than one. So in this case, you'll be hitting plus before you enter a correction range. And this one, they offer a, a suggested value, which I accepted of 100 to 120. But the 120, it's, it's a yellow number. So you're going to get this message, maybe, there we go, that the correction range is outside what people typically set. So there's values that are going to show up as green, values that show up as yellow, and there's a few values that will show up as red. And the red is kind of like you're up against a hard limit warning. And then the other thing is you'll see these modal um, messages on loop dev quite a bit, and it's kind of to break the flow. So you'll see something that looks a little bit different. It catches your eye. And we're going to keep going. And now we talk about the pre-meal target. And I didn't do that quite right. Okay, so pre, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm, there we go. I never set the pre-meal target personally. If you, once you've set the pre-meal target, then that pre-meal button is active. And if you tap it accidentally, you turn off your overrides. And, you know, it's just my personal preference is to leave it blank. So you'll notice that I didn't put a setting in, and this is the one setting that allows you to confirm the setting without doing an entry. Um, some people prefer to use the premium override, and that's fine. This is when you would put the number in. And then we move forward to basal rates. Once again, this is something that you can have more than one rate per day. So you have the plus sign in the upper right. So you add your entry and you use the, the, the dials. Now, I think that this is the first time you've seen a, a, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Okay, if I can get back here. All right, so there's a, a place to the left of the decimal and a place to the right of the decimal. So this is a different way of entering things. And if you wanna go between 1.05 and, and 0 0.95, you have to spin the dial all the way in order to get there. So that it takes a little bit of um, practice to get used to this, but once you've used it a couple of times, it's okay. Um, so basically this is to prevent people not putting in the right decimal place. So, so to the left is the one's place and to the right is the decimal. Sorry, I'm probably belaboring this and we'll keep going. All right, now the delivery limits is another one that's a little tricky. So you'll find that when you, when it first, when you tap the minus sign to the right of the maximum basal rate, it will offer a suggestion, which is based on what your actual basal rate schedule is. 
And you'll notice that nothing shows up in this dashed line. You actually have to move one of the two dials to a different number before that line will fill in. And that's another thing that people have a little bit of trouble with when they first start. So then you'll see as soon as I move the dial, that number fills in. And then you move to the next dial, same thing. As soon as I move the dial, the number will fill in. Okay, so confirm the setting. That's something that just takes a little practice. Now I'm gonna go through this fast because now I'm going backwards. So your insulin model, there's two choices, rapid acting adults and rapid acting children. And then you might say, well, but I use FIOS. Well, this is different. <laughs> this is, these apply to Humalog, Novolog, and Ephedra. So you're either choosing the rapid acting or rapid acting, sorry, the adult model or the children's model for those three rapid acting insulins. There's a different section where you can choose the brand of insulin you're using and there it will include Fiosp and Lumgev. Um, so that's a, a lot of confusion is, well, wait a second, I wanted more choices here. So this is just choosing adult versus children and that's just for the three rapid acting insulins that are modeled in loop. So I'm gonna keep going here. And now you're back to carb ratios. Once again, you hit a plus, you put your value in, you add it, you can put in more than one entry. I didn't bother in this case. Same thing with insulin sensitivity. And it, it will offer what it thinks is reasonable based on your basal rates and other things that you've entered. Or maybe it's just a midpoint. I don't know, I shouldn't speak. I think it might just be a midpoint average what people use. Um, but if you just accept it, you can just hit, hit add and it will take this. You don't have to, to dither the dial to get it to accept. And that's basically it. You now get to look at all of your therapy settings. You can review them. You save your settings. You uh, allow notifications to come in and you allow Bluetooth. And now you're ready to go on to add a CGM and to add a pump. So any questions on the, the new onboarding? Okay. Now, there was a lot of explanation for some of these things. You can get to those explanations um, I think um, if you tap that particular setting and therapy setting, I'll, I'll show you that in a second, I think. Maybe not. I don't remember which movies I made and which ones I didn't. So it, would you like to see a dash pair in, uh, in the movie? That's, that's the next thing. Yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So actually, let me back up to the slides. So you can see that you've got your CGMs already added. I'm in open loop right now and I need to add a pump. And if you click on this, then I, I didn't put in the screen of what happens when you get to settings. I meant to do that, it's in loop docs. So basically when you tap on settings, it breaks things up by different patterns. There's like, are you doing uh, your, your, your dosing strategy? Is that temp basal or is it automatic bolus? Um, there's a therapy setting, so then you go off to all of those therapy settings that we just looked at, and then you can add services like Night Scout, and um, you can, at the bottom, there's a, a support, and that's where you go in order to issue a, a loop report, like you might be used to losing. So I forgot to put that one in. But at any rate, now we'll see the movie where we pair the pump, and um, when you first start pairing, I guess I need to, oh, there we go. Okay, so it'll ask you, what is the default expiration reminder that you want? And that will be for every pod. So it will just use this as your default expiration reminder for all future pods. So if you have to change every two days, you're gonna want 24 hours because uh, it's the time before the expiration time. And if you like to push it to 72, uh, you can't do less than one hour. That's a, an insulate requirement on the pods. And then you can also say, when do you want to be notified for low reservoir? You may remember with Loop Master right now, I think it's defaults to 30. So you can do anywhere, I think between 10 and I don't know what the end of the dial is, but a lot of people prefer it to be down in, at the 10 level. And this is where you say, what kind of insulin are you going to put in? 
So basically, once you're you're whenever you change a pump, you're you're basically a, a set. You you might want to change the type of insulin. Um, so that's where this shows up. And once I've gone down and made a selection, in this case, FIOS, if later, and I've done this a lot with test phones, I've deleted the loop app completely, I've imported from Night Scout, it will show up with those adult and child things will show up with no, nothing selected. And that's because FIOS doesn't have an adult and a child setting, you just use the FIOS setting. So, um, and then we keep going. And now we're ready to pair the pod. So this is real time. This is how long it took for this, my phone to start talking to the pod. And it's doing the normal communication, except now it's doing with Bluetooth. And this was with a pod that expired more than a year ago. It was manufactured in December in 2018. Um, and now I'm gonna move ahead because you don't need to watch it prime. And it'll say that it's done. And then it moves on to the next screen. So remember how I talked about the modal thing? So when you say continue, it brings up a modal menu that says that, that it can only be done once. And the reason they put all these extra menus in is the same focus groups with Tidepool was that there, this is the highest stress point for people putting pods on is, is the actual insertion. So now you say, yes, I'm, I'm ready to go. And when you press the confirm, it brings up yet another screen and it tells you, you know, tap below to start the insertion. And then when you tap, it begins the insertion. So this once again is the, the time elapsed before it starts doing the insertion and the normal countdown um, while it's doing the clicks and do inserting the needle and then finishing the, the insertion prime. And then there'll be a few more screens. If I can pause properly. Okay, so it's done with the insertion. And that little spinny thing you saw, that was communication between the phone and the pump to make sure that everything had gone well with the insertion. And then the next screen is, sorry, pull it back just a hair halfway. Okay, so there's this little picture. Are you sure the cannula is inserted properly? Well, at least for me, I know it's inserted because I feel it. But parents looking for children might look at that pink slide um, to make sure that that went in properly. And so you have to say, yes, it's, it's in there. If you say no, it gives you one more opportunity to say, oops, I didn't mean to say no, it was really okay. Um, but at this point, you can discard the pod if for some reason it doesn't insert properly. Or if you forgot to put it on your body, <laughs> <laughs> it insert by mistake. Uh, this would be the time you would uh, you would back up, and then there's a finish setup which I went too fast. Um, let me see. See if I can hit pause at the right time. Okay. So at this point, you can once again change your scheduled reminder. Remember when you first added the dash pod? It let you set default reminders, default uh, low insulin, default. Uh, insulin type. Um, this is a screen that only shows up the very first time you add a dash pod. Every other time it will skip all that stuff. It'll just go straight to the pair pod screen. So this allows you on a pod by pod basis to change the reminder time. It doesn't change the default. It just changes it for that one pod. There's another place where you can change the default, but, but this isn't it. And then I think we're done. Now we're back to, we have our, our pod symbol and we're done. So that's those those are I thought the most exciting screens that you might want to see. And then I want to say a little bit about free APS. Um, it's at the same level as Loopmaster. So it doesn't have all these new architectural and menu features that Loop Dev has. It's basically free APS with the addition of the dash. And why would you want free APS? There are some other features that are not in loop, at least not at the current time. Um, there's additional CGM. Um, extra for iOS is currently in free APS master or the master version of free APS. Glucose Direct, which is another app that reads Libre sensors. And these are European or non-US Libre sensors because they're, as far as I know, there is no app that knows how to read Libre sensors that are sold in the US. 
Um, so a lot of this supports our friends in the other part of the world. There is an import export to a named file feature, which we may have in loop eventually, but we don't have right now. And there's a manual temp basal feature, which is very helpful. For example, if you're a swimmer, you can set a manual temp basal that lasts more than half an hour and you don't have to be close to your phone for it to stay at that, at that level. Um, so the free APS is a fork of loop. So it's actually loops control algorithm and interface for the most part. Um, it was started by Ivan Valko and he abandoned that in spring 2021 because he wanted to go off and do free APS X. Now the X part means it's the open APS algorithm. So it's a completely different algorithm from loop. Um, and he couldn't handle both. So at that time, the loop and learn team picked up um, support of the free APS to, to help those people, especially Libre users. And we consolidated several different forks. So there are different types of additional CGM that were at different forks and we brought them all together under the free APS. Well, I don't know if we brought them all. We brought some of them together under a separate, under the free APS umbrella. The dev branch, which is basically free APS underscore dev branch, has dash added, but it has all the old pod screens. So it'll look just like an arrow pod screen, not like the fancy new one that you just saw under loop dev. So if you do want to go ahead with free APS dev, please read the links for do it yourself um, and uh, free APS and free APS dev. And these charts are gonna be posted on the Loop and Learn site. So you'll be able to get access to them after today. And then I think I missed a chart because I'm, maybe I'm not. Yeah, I missed a chart. Okay, can't miss this one. So the, this one's kind of important. So why should you wait or not on Loop dev? So if you do want to jump onto loop dev, you have to understand the state it's in right now. And that state is um, that it's under very active development. You need to pay attention. Um, there will be bug reports. There will be fixes. Things might set up so that you actually have to completely delete your app and reload it. That's what, uh, this is a quote from Pete Schwamm, who knows I'm giving this talk tonight, and he did review the charts beforehand. And he said, tell everyone they could hit something. We had an incompatible schema change in the end of February, where everyone had to delete their loop app, loop dev app, and then reload it. Fortunately, we had the night scout so that we could reload our profile from that. Um, there's something else that we may not know about that will require you to do something similar. You might need to, you know, no telling. So this is only for people who are okay with that, people who want to actively participate, um, join in the, the Zulip chat. And if there's an error you need to, it's your responsibility to, to report it. You know, so, so don't just take loop dev as is thinking it's the same as master. It hasn't undergone the same level of test. I think that was clear. Is that anyone confused about this? Okay. Uh, there's the movies, there's the free APS, and then there's the final question is, should you switch your prescription to Dash? Um, so part of that is how much of a stockpile do you have? Um, what's your risk tolerance? And then when do we think these things are going to come out? So I've made a, a scientific guess that's probably going to be at least one to two months before Loop Dev is fairly stable, which means it's not getting these uh, changes that might require you to delete and restart. And then I'm guessing another two to four weeks after it's fairly stable before we'll be comfortable making a release to loop 3.0. And um, free APS is already basically stable. It's the dash code, which was developed in parallel with loop dev. They're similar code. They're not identical because the loop manager, the pump manager for loop dev has, has been modified. So there's differences between the code, but there's a fair number of files that are identical exactly. So, um, and that's, I'm guessing a couple of weeks, I, I keep getting distracted by doing other things before, um, before I can, I'm the one who would make that actual release. And there's a few things I feel need to be done before I'm, I'm ready to turn that loose. 
but there are people testing it. And uh, so I'm, you know, sure they'll let me know if there's a problem. So that's all the charts I have. And now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, and then I think we'll go back to open questions. Does anybody have questions? Okay. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> stuff in chat. Hang on, I'm just trying to get back to chat. Okay. Um, yes, there are questions. Uh, can you put the reminder at 79 hours? No, you cannot. Is that going to be positive? I see uh, Randall answered the reminders count backwards from seven right. to two. Right. You can't do that. Uh, question about free APS. Uh, will free APS still have Night Scout CGM so people who use Spike can still use this? Yes. Yes, I, I guess I didn't put that in because Night Scout as a CGM has been added to Loop Dev now. And I was putting in there's additional CGMs available with free APS, and that would be the X Drip for iOS and the uh, Glucose Direct. Um, because actually, Bill started with the Night Scout as a CGM code that Ivan put together, modified it so it would work with Loop Dev. Okay, I don't see anything else in chat. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to put them in chat or uh, open forum. If you want to unmike but keep it short, you're welcome to. Uh, question from Carla: Do we anticipate that Loopin <laughs> Dash will work with expired pods? Yeah, so I'm wearing one that uh, was. Oh, see, I could look it up. Oh, actually, the ones I'm testing on my desk right now were manufactured in 2018 in November and expired 2020 in uh, May. Um, the one I'm wearing, I think, uh, was probably manufactured in, about a year later, but uh, it's working, so. I, and I should say, I, I didn't put out the words, but Katie D. Simone put out a single request on Facebook for Dash Pods. And she has a single one. <laughs> and she said, I've got plenty now. She brought up over 300 the last time she had a Stanford chemo thing. And she's coming up next week for her next Stanford appointment. And she says she has probably, you know, more than she had last time that she's bringing up. And those have gone out to um, testers. Um, they'll be going, more of them will be going out to testers uh, with this next batch. And the really interesting thing was that in December 2019, they went from one kind of board for the Bluetooth connection to the pod to a different style board for the Bluetooth connection for the pod. And the only reason we can talk to these so-called NXP boards is because we had them to test. So we're able to say, oh, these are different and we treat them slightly differently. Um, so, so that's been the, the whole community has helped by um, supplying these these donations, and I can't believe how much people hoard. So I, like, anyway. I, I, I just have to speak to that. Um, we live with the disease that uh, anything can happen, and I, the world can be urgent. Those of us who live in California have earthquakes. Those in the southeast have hurricanes. You never know when the supply chain goes down. So. Hoarding um, is kind of open to interpretation. Have enough of right. covering yourself in disasters and supply chain, which you'll never know if it happens or not. That, um, that is true. Um, and I do want to just hold up this sheaf of uh, things that you peel off the trays. These are all have all been water pods on my desk. So we have made <laughs> excellent use of, uh, of these pods for, for testing. Okay, there's a question, interesting question. Um, our insurance still won't cover Dash. Has anyone had luck getting it covered when they normally won't? My daughter would love to ditch the, the orange link. And I'll just answer that. Um, one way you can always do this is, is contact um, Insulate directly. Um, they have some staff members who are uh, experts in where the supplies are and are able to kind of direct you and help you file appeals if you need to. So sometimes it's a prior authorization. Sometimes it's two or three rounds of that. Um, but it, it's it's a logic system that you have to explain. But if anyone else has had trouble and has been successful, please feel free to share that. Um, and I'm going to go on to the next question. Um, that was answered. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, the, for those of us who's just, oh, I got that one. Uh, not clear. Does it work with FIASP? 
you can say. Yeah, so, so I do want to say something about the, the there's been, and, and I forgot to say that in loop docs under facts, there's a section that says basically loop dev preview. And a lot of those menus that I showed are all highlighted in there. And the very, there's a little, you know, info box at the top that says one of the most frequently asked questions is, what's going on with the child versus adult in one place and the, the insulin in another. So it's basically that child versus adult model applies to the Humalog, the Novolog, and the Ephedra insulin vials. So there's a place later on when you actually attach your pump where you can say what kind of insulin you're using. And in there, there is also a FIOS model and a LUMGEV model. And so once you've selected FIOS, that, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's child versus adult, because there is only one FIOS model. We don't have that level of degradation for the, the faster act, the super fast. I don't know whether, I, I hate to, but none of them are fast enough, but the LUMGEV and the FIOS, there is only a single model. You can't choose child versus adult. And here, here's an interesting question from Blake. Um, how should someone decide to use Loopmaster or Free APS since both will now work with Dash? That's an individual question. I will say that the Loop Dev has a lot of work done under the hood to make it run more smoothly. I do not anticipate any of that being pulled over into Free APS. So Free APS is essentially a little bit behind. It's like the 224 version of Loop with some updates to the Rider Link iOS pump. That you know, there's a few updates. I, I fixed some stuff with the watch. The watch will now sync fast, uh, sync correctly in Free APS Dev. That hasn't gotten into Free APS yet, but um, it's very similar to the older version of Loop. With so so that's kind of a, a personal decision. If you're in a situation where you currently use free APS and you want to use Dash, this would be a great time for you to try free APS dev and you can use Dash right away. But I would encourage people that are using free APS, when you get things, when we add things like the manual temp basal, or, yeah, so when you can manually set a temp basal for a, a, a value and a time, um, and I think there's probably one other thing that's pretty important um, to some people. When, when you can add those things in dev, please give dev a try because I would love to stop supporting free APS, but until, until there's no longer a need, I will continue to support it. Oh, the other thing is if you're using Libre, because I don't know if Libre will make it into loop dev anytime soon. And this, the reason is Dexcom in their transmitter does all the calculations to generate a single number for blood glucose. If you're using one of these hack systems to read a Libre system, you're getting the raw data that then goes through, the, not the manufacturer's algorithm, a different algorithm to come up with an answer for your blood glucose. So you have to calibrate these systems and it's, it's more a matter of who, I don't know. Anyway, it may take a little bit more time to get a Libre sensor into loop dev than, than works for people that must use a Libre. So that's, okay. I think, the second question, uh, yeah, go ahead. All right, I'll throw no. it at you. Um, automatic bolus will be available on the master three point Oh, oh, absolutely. It's, it's okay. available on master right now. Okay. It's been on master since 224. Controlling so, percentage of the bolus application oh, 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 oh. won't be in master unless you use John Fawcett's patch. Right. So you all probably who want to not use free, P free APS will need to use that unless we can convince certain people to get that control within loop master slash dev. That has not been successful to date. <laughs> well, and, and I don't know. Um, I, I think John has pulled together. I don't know if John's on. He's not on. And no. if he's on, I won't speak for him. 
If he is on, I mean, if he's not on, I, I believe um, he's put, pulled together several different things into a single patch um, that you can apply to Loop Dev. Um, and not only is it, can you, well, actually, I, I'm not going to speak for John. I know he's been putting things together to allow you to have kind of a, if, if your blood sugar is higher, you're more aggressive and it's lower, you less aggressive. And also something that uh, has a way of handling negative IOB that's yeah, built his, up. Yeah, his patch yeah. currently has um, the auto bolus, like the bolus percentage has his switcher, which switches from uh, temp basal to auto, uh, auto bolus based on blood glucose. And then um, the negative IOB kind of reduction factor that can stack created um, is in there as well so it's, it's pretty easy to apply but and we'll maybe we'll try and figure out a way to make it easy for people to opt into those features in master someday but that's not what we're working on right now so laura do you have your hand raised laura shindley i just asked her about it in chat but okay oh okay uh, and Laura, you're muted. Let me take another Can question you... and then we'll come back to that. Um, this is interesting. This is follow on to the dash pods from Aurelia, um, a longtime friend who started with us early. Um, since I plan to use the dash pods with loop, I didn't need the dash PDM. So I just had my endo send the prescription mm -hmm. to my local CVS and they had the pods the next day. I don't think I even needed the prior auth. If you haven't tried using a pharmacy instead of the DME, I'd recommend that. I kind of like to add to that. Um, it is not ever a bad idea to have a PDM. Um, you never know what's going to happen. You don't know if you end up needing it. That's kind of the way I look at it. Not everyone feels the same way. It's just um, a really big hassle. That's what it is a hassle. Said. Like we had to wait an extra two or three weeks to get the dash pods with PDM because the Kaiser Pharmacy won't mail the okay. PDM and dash. But I could have mail ordered just the pods and had them in a couple of days. So oh, could you order the pods uh, without the PDM and your next order, put it in for with, yeah. with the PDM? So yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That as long as your endo puts in, like um, Tessa's put in the, the starter kit, which is the PDM and pods and the pods, and, and you can usually pick which one to fulfill. Um, so yeah, you could order the pods first and later on ask for the PDM. And the other thing is this is prescription. If your PDM ever breaks or whatever, you can just get a new prescription for the PDM. It's not like this whole DME you know, replacement process. I mean, you can contact Insulet probably get a replacement as well, yeah. but um, you can't just get the prescription. Amy probably. just said you can you can ask Insulet um, for the PDM and you might want to have one in case of an emergency. So yep. it's, a, it, it's not a bad idea. Um, so I'm going to jump down next. Um, will Master 3.1 use the same six hour prediction model as the current Loop Master? So, the prediction model is based on the duration of insulin activity, which is six hours for just about every insulin that we use, but it looks out three hours in the forecast. It still does look so out six, but it's, it's it, yeah, but it's graduating. Yeah. The, the first three hours is, is, I, you know, I don't know because I don't know under the, and I, I suspect that's more of a peach mom question than we we'll need to question. update the docs with that, but I just yeah. an explanation about yeah. how it's a graduated cutoff, not a, you know, yeah. the three to six hour mark is. Right. So there. it's the, the, the near term is more important. I mean, we all know that loops always wrong out six hours. So, um, yeah, I, I have, I really like loop dev. I'm, I've been very happy with it. So. It's slightly more aggressive just because of the way, which is nice. I think in, in a good way, like in a safe way. Uh, in terms of like the cutoff, you guys are looking at the six hour mark, the way it handles it. And I, I think most of the admins have been using uh, loop dev as well, possibly because we're a little ducklings following Marion, uh, but it, it, it's, a good, it's, it's a good duck to follow. Um, it, just a, a clarity question from Sherry. I'm still unclear on the steps that I would need to take to switch to Dash. Would I rebuild the app? It would be helpful to have the exact steps on Loop and Learn. I'm a bit lost. You want to take that through real quick? Well, so so basically, I'm trying to discourage people from building Loop Dev unless they're ready to accept the responsibility of your testing an app. Um, so. If, but once we're to the point where Loop Dev is ready for prime time, or if you're a free APS person who wants to test it, yes, you do rebuild the app. 
once you've rebuilt the app and the app will continue working with your Eros pod. So you might have an Eros pod on, you build the app, everything just keeps working. Then when you take your Eros pod off and you wanna do a dash pod, you have to, after you deactivate the pod, you go to the bottom of the screen and, and well, let's see what is, okay. I'm doing this from memory. It comes up saying pair pod and you say cancel. When you cancel the pair pod, it gives you the choice of pairing a pod or switching to a different kind of pump. At that point, you tap on switch to a different kind of insulin delivery system, and it takes you back to that screen where I, I think I showed earlier where you, you choose what kind of pump am I going to, to use. Or actually, you know, I had that as a picture and then I took it out and use the movie slide. So basically you get shown the normal, which pump do you wanna choose? But now there's a new one. There's Omnipod, which is the Eros, and Omnipod Dash, which is the Dash. So you choose the Dash, and then you get all the screens that were shown in that movie clip that I went through. Okay. Does, that, does that help, Sherry? I don't... I yes, it helps. It helps wonderfully. Thank you for explaining that. Yes, thank you. You know, and I'm glad you brought that up because several testers who, you know, they're fairly experienced, it took them a while to figure out how to switch to Dash mm -hmm. because we hadn't written out the steps that first you have to deactivate your old pump, delete that pump, then add new. So, okay. Okay, Thank so you. Um, we'll throw it to Laura, but I'll, I'll read the question, and Laura, if, you, if, if there's more, you can uh, unmute. Um, just to clarify from Laura, uh, will the new Loop Master and Free APS um, heads-up display look the same as in the dev that you just show, or are we losing the minutes since last Loop? <laughs> there's been an extremely active discussion about this on Zulip Chat. Um, if you're interested to read, you can go over. I'm trying to think what the topic is. Kenny, you may remember what the topic is. It's something like, you know, HUD display or, you know, minutes since so anyway. Most search for, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there is a discussion about it, and Pete's pretty firm, and nothing shows up on the heads up display that doesn't absolutely need to be there. Um, what is nice to be there is uh, if your pump is in a different time zone, there's a little clock icon that shows up at the upper upper right. You know, So if there's warnings you need to know, those show up. If you're getting close to the end of the time on that pump, that will show up in the, in the HUD. Now, because loop dev is loop dev, there's some things that are missing that need to be there that should be there, and we're working on getting those in. Um, Minor side note, you are losing the ability to tap the CGM and jump to the Dexcom app. It's on the second screen at the bottom. That, that's right. It's, it's br brings up a whole lot of, long. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, sorry. Um, and then there was something else. Oh, right now, when you tap on that, that loop in the middle, it only says, you know, it's been more than 10 minutes since you've looped. And then it tells you to tap on the CGM and tap on the pump to find out. Well, that's just something that has been wired in yet. Obviously, when you tap on that loop in the middle, you want the information about when was the last loop. And if there is a communication problem, is it a communication with your CGM or communication with your pump? So the plan is to get all that stuff worked in, but this is a work in progress. Okay, well, let's take one more question then. Um, Randall had something to add and Bill probably has 10,000 things to add. Um, so from Blake, some of us with younger kids have issues with new pod sites. After two to three hours, the insulin is very effective causing lows. This becomes a challenge during overnight hours. Uh, is there some way for a new algorithm to address absorption efficiency at the new pod site versus a seasoned pod site? No. It's not really going to be addressed. I think that behavior is totally, in my personal opinion, random. Like some people don't do well at the on site. So yeah. it's the opposite effect. So I don't think you can code for that successfully. Well, I, I have a new pod override um, that, that I use. Um, but for me, my problem is the old site has started to lose its effectiveness. And if I'm slow to switch to a new site, then the first few hours with my new site 
aren't making up for all the missing basil from the prior site. Mm -hmm. I think that's far more of a common thing. So if this person is getting this routinely, then perhaps they need a new pod that's a, a, an override, a new pod override that's a less, less insulin in. Um, or don't use overrides before on the failing pod. That sometimes be the case. Too. Oh, so well, yeah. So maybe yeah. go overboard on the pods failing. But yeah. Right, and it catches up with them later. And yeah. It yeah. To be these sites okay. So okay. Let's, talk, let's talk just Randall. Uh, he said, "I'd like to share how the experience." Well, I, I have I have one question that got skipped, and that's uh, is working on library three for free APS. Um, I I think what you're asking is. Is there a plan to get Libre 3 working? As far as I know, no one knows how to use, how to talk to a Libre 3 anywhere in the world. And they're not going to um, make it easy either. Yeah. So, so one and two were, were working or we were able to read them in Europe. I say we, the whole community, I had nothing to do with it. But the ones that are sold in the US, as far as I know, no one has been able to, to talk to them. So um, I, anyway, I, I think that got... Okay, one more question uh, from Amy. Question. Any any whispers of including an insulin oh, model for a frozen? It has already been written. It hasn't been the it has not been merged in, um, and we really need people that use a Fresa to test it out. But that is one thing is it's fairly easy to drop things in with this setting. Oh, and I didn't even talk about if if you tap on the insulin screen, there's a new new knob at the top where you can tap on a tab that says non-pump insulin. You can add insulin there yeah. directly and you can choose the type of insulin. So the default insulin that you're adding is what's in your pump, but you can also choose a different type of insulin. So any of the insulins that, that there's a model for, you can select. So that would be the, the way in which you would add a Fresa. It looks like you'd have to add it up in your setup because otherwise it's not available in a non-pump insulin. But no, it's not. It's not there yet. Okay, someone's cool. someone's written it, but it hasn't been merged in. So okay. if you, it's, yeah. so you can see the code if you want to go look for it, but it's not in. Uh, yeah. The if branch. people want to right. use a Fresa, want to help you, what do they do? Join Zulip chat and pay attention. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, there are instructions to add it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, you can go into Zulip chat and you can search for a Fresa. I think you will find it. So. Okay, Randall, what would you like to share? Yeah, so, um, you know, changing the arrows to the dash is not exactly the same. And in almost pretty much every way, it's better. But I just want to kind of share what the experience was like, Marion and anybody else. I'd love to hear, hear, hear your stories as well. But um, I've been following in chat to see what people's reactions are. Uh, and I think they've just pretty much been overwhelmingly positive. Um, one of the first was somebody who said, his daughter, um, I guess a cheerleader or something, was in the gym at cheer practice, left her phone without a Riley link on the other end of the gym, and it didn't miss one loop the entire time. Um, the, another person has said that the speed to give um, the boluses is super fast. So you give the command, and it's immediately clicking, and then you're done. And there's no longer that long delay of going to the, to the link device and then, and then on. So it's um, significantly faster in that regard. But with my daughter, I don't know if it was just our Riley link or what, but um, she had to be within about eight feet of the Riley link and the Riley link had to be within about eight feet of the phone. So we had a maximum tether of about 16 feet to the phone or else things just didn't work. With this, with the new dash, which is just using standard Bluetooth, we've got 40 or 50 feet before things start timing out. So there's a significantly longer range. Uh, it's a lot faster and more stable. So my, the, my favorite part about it is not having the, that link and constantly telling her to put it back on. And she's very active and would smash the crap out of it. And we destroyed one enclosure, was in pieces by the end of it and um, had to get a new one. And now, now that's just completely gone and I'm just yelling at her to put her phone back on. So uh, that's that's a few of my things. Before I turn it over to anybody else's experiences, though, um, uh, I would just say um, opening the can of worms of Omnipod 5, which is just now hitting the market, um, there is, has been zero development on that yet. Uh, our hope is that it shares a significant overlap with the Omnipod Dash, and it won't be as significant of an effort to get it in 
uh, but we don't have our hands on any of them yet and have not started any development. But there's hope there that it won't be nearly as, as difficult as, as this one was. And if anyone does get their hands on one, you know who to contact. <laughs> you can donate a pot. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think we should all give, uh, you know, people like Bill and Randall and me too, you know, round of applause because, you know, we're all working together. Everyone on this screen makes a contribution. So anyway. I, yeah, Bill gets extra. It's, Bill it's gets extra credibility. It's an extraordinary effort. Uh, if you can only see the messenger streams that go through the day and night, uh, it's worldwide effort. And uh, when iOS came out with their update, you cannot even begin to imagine how much effort was going through as systems were crashing. Um, Marion, you're extraordinary. Your whole team is amazing. Uh, thank you. And, and, and if you have further questions, put, a, put them on um, Facebook, Loop and Learn, and oh. ask questions. Uh, Marion, thank you. I Thank you for taking the time to do your, your slide. So today. sorry, Joe, if you're going to ask to be recognized, could you show your face? Yeah, where's yes, your face, please. Ben? <laughs> maybe, maybe he doesn't want to show his face, but... Uh, there was a, a direct message to me that he did a There's little bit Joe. of work on this. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> you got to unmute, man. Unmute yourself. Unmute. You're mute. Sorry, I was checking into zero basal rate support during this whole thing. So I'm, I'm listening, but I'm, I'm working. Yep. Anyway. That's exciting. Yeah. That's, that'll be super useful for a lot of people. So I don't know the zero basal rate. It turned out it was a big rewrite to make it all work correctly for both Dash and Eros, but. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's, it's in on loop dev now, at least as a PR for it. Wow. Yep. And, and huge props to Joe for really steering me in the right direction when I got started on the dash, uh, integration. So I really appreciated that. And I see we're rocking the same haircut now. So that's awesome too. <laughs> this is the KDD Simone look. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to actually see you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you everybody for what you're doing. If you have more questions, uh, that's what we do. We answer questions. Um, and um, Marianne, kudos. Brilliant. And thank you all. Have a good evening. Um, stay tuned. There's more coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Good night.